faithful Father Enduring friend Your tender mercies like a river With no end It overwhelms me Covers my sin each time I come into your presence, I stand in wonder once again. Your grace still amazes me. Your love is still a mystery each day. Still amazes me, your grace still amazes me. I hope you've not let it slip away, God's love and mercy to you. I trust you haven't. Psalm 137, I trust you'll find your place in Psalm 137. Take your Bibles if you would. And I'm going to bring a message. I don't like want to bring a message like I'm going to bring this morning because typically God does a work in my heart and He has done a work in my heart out of this passage. And I... I yeah, always a little reluctant to bring a message like this because sometimes you feel like a failure, you know. 
And, uh, but I know message that's born in the heart speak to the heart. And there's one of these messages. Several months ago, you've heard me say, if you've been around here very much, you heard me say it. I heard a man say, he brought a challenge to the people listening, and he said, I challenge you to read the book of Psalms on your knees. Read the book of Psalms on your knees. And that was an interesting challenge. I never heard anybody say that. And so I took that challenge, and I'm telling you, it absolutely changed your Bible reading. We live our life in such a way that we don't take time to be with the Lord. We don't live and we don't be in a situation a lot of times where God has our undivided attention. We live our life and we go and we do and we're busy. We get the day planned out. We've got the day ironed out. We've got our plans. And often, and I'm so guilty of this in my own self, my day does not involve God. And that's just the truth. I get up and I go and I, I proceed in the day and I, I traffic through the day and before I know it, I went and I have not even spent time with God. When I read Psalm 137, especially on my knees, and I began to realize, and God speaks to me in verse number 1, the Bible says, But the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remember Zion. Notice verse number 2. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they carried us away captive, required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us myrrh, saying, Sing unto us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I forget thee, O Jerusalem. Let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. We can go on to read, but that, that captured me when I got to verse number 2. When I read that expression, they have hung their harps in the willows. And as I read that portion of Scripture, and God brought to my mind the visibility, that the vision that I read in my mind when I read that, the Bible says that the, the children of Israel are captive. They're brought into bondage. If you know the, the name of Babylon, anytime you find in Babylon that the children of Israel in Babylon, they're in bondage. God's using Babylon, God's using the enemy to correct them. God's using this particular setting. This is a psalmist of David, and he's writing these words. He says, when I sit down by the river of Babylon, he said, why is that so important? Because it's not the Jordan River. It's not the rivers of Israel. It's not the, the Pafar River, and it's not a Banner River. It's not the rivers of Jordan. It's the river of Babylon. They're in a strange land. And the Bible says they're so destroyed, they're so brokenhearted, uh, they're so devastated, if you will. The Bible says they sat down and they began to weep. Notice what they said in verse 1 again. He says, we wept because we remember Zion. What's Zion? Th that, that's God's territory. That's God's blessing. Zion is always where God is. And they were in Babylon. They were in a strange land. They were in a place where they're not familiar with. And they look around and say, oh, what has happened to us? We have destroyed. We have destroyed ourselves. We have lost our song. We have lost everything that God has given us. We're in Babylon. You ever woke up and figured out how in the world I got here? You know, sin will take you somewhere that you never want to end up. I, I can't help but think when I think about Babylon and they got down and they sat down and the Bible says they remembered they were disgusted with themselves. And the harp that which it represents an emblem or a symbol of joy and rejoicing and peace and, and contentment. The Bible says we have no peace and have no contentment and they hung their harp in the willows. And I'm looking in the faces of, of Christian people that I believe with all of my heart have hung their harps in the willows. They have given up on God. They have let down the things of God and they've gotten discouraged and deep beaten down and they've hung their harps on the willows. My message to you this morning is, where's your harp hanging? 
Where's your harp hanging this morning? I notice in this particular portion of Scripture, they did not hide it behind the bushes. They did not throw it in the ditches. They, there's something reverent about the harp. There's something reverent uh, about what they had and they know to be God. And it's almost like throwing your Bible down in the ditch. And we wouldn't deliberately do that. We wouldn't throw our Bibles in the ditch. or We wouldn't throw the American flag in the ditch. We wouldn't throw the things that are sacred to us. They didn't throw it in the ditch. They didn't throw it and destroy it. They didn't break it over their leg and throw it in the ditches. And they didn't do anything damaging to it. They just simply hung it up. Almost to say there's no need in this anymore. Almost to say that we don't have the joy that God gave us once. We don't have the rejoicing that God gave us. And my question to you this morning is, where's the joy that Jesus promised? Where's the joy that, that comes with the Christian life? You know, salvation and being a Christian is not just going to heaven. You are forfeiting yourself, and I am forfeiting myself, if all we're waiting on for the salvation that we have is to get to heaven. Salvation is the, is the uh, highway, is the avenue, is the connection with God while we're present here today. Salvation is not just a free ticket to get out of hell. Salvation is not just something that you can just have and one of these days I get to heaven. Salvation is a joyful way if we'll live in it. Notice what he said. He says, we have hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. When I think about that harp and I think about what it represents, and I think about King David and a lot of these psalms are written by David. There's 150 psalms in your Bible. Psalm, uh, David wrote, uh, the book of Psalms, and a lot of times he used the harp to rejoice. He used the harp to praise God. He used the harp to soothe the evil spirit of Saul. As a boy, as he set out as a, as a young lad out in the wilderness and uh, keeping his dad's sheep, and the Bible said he would play his harp and worship God. And I can only in my mind's eye see a little boy out there maybe sitting in the field while the sheep are grazing with his harp. And it's not like a harp you think we would have today, a great big harp. It's about 18 or 24 inches tall and they would take that with them almost like an instrument. And I can only imagine seeing him sitting under a tree and just worshiping God and having the joy of the Lord and just having rejoicing and just worshiping God and seeing the sun come up and seeing the trees blow and the, the sheep and just thanking God for the sheep and thanking God for the grass and thanking God for the wind and just rejoicing. I mean, that harp has so many symbolisms. That harp has so much rejoicing in it. That's when it makes me burden, it makes me my heart break when I read here, they've hung their harps in the willows. So my question to you is, where is your harp hanging this morning? Is it thrown down? Have you hung up your harp? Have you set it to the side and say, well, I just don't have the joy of the Lord anymore. I just don't have uh, the contentment I once had. Isn't it interesting to me? It has been to me anyway. When I got saved, I mean, man, I was jumping off the, uh, the bedside praising God. And you've been born again. You've been washed in the blood. You're getting your way to heaven and everything is wonderful. We heard today in Sunday school. and uh, You know, when you get saved, the trees look different. <laughs> The leaves look different, and I mean, everything's just, it's just so, so clean and so crisp. And sometimes I wonder if, if life begins to suck out the song. And I'm going to give you a few things here that I think will help us when we consider this thought. Where's your heart hanging? The first thing I want to show you back again in verse number one notice the first thing that will cause you to hang your harp up is a strange land. Notice with me, if you will. Verse number 1, we find Babylon. But notice verse number 4. The Bible says, How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? You know what will cause you to hang your harp is the world in which we live. I'm going to tell you something. It's hard, no doubt, to go in and out of our day on a daily basis. I'm talking about just punch a clock and go to work and come out and go here and go there and still sing a song for God. This strange land, and let me remind you, we're Christians, this is not our home. This is not, we're just passing through this place. You know what's happening to us? We get our roots buried down in this world and we get to looking at this world and we get discouraged. Can I tell you, remind you, according to the Word of God, that we're just passing through. You're not supposed to like this world. If you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, look, I know it's disheartening things that's going on. I know the things that are around us we can't control. But look, God said we're just strangers. We're not supposed to set root down in this place anyway. If you get content with this world, you're out of the will of God anyway. 
If all of this stuff doesn't bother you that's going on in the world and all the things around us, is this whatever happens? I'm going to tell you something. God said that when you're in a strange land, the people mourn. The wicked, the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, when the wicked rule, they mourn. When the righteous in rule, they rejoice. We're in a strange land, beloved. This is not our home. This is not our dwelling place. He said in Babylon. Babylon is very, very wicked at this time. Now when they came out of uh, Israel and went into Babylon, they had to look at other gods. They had to listen to other music. They had to uh, uh, give allegiance to other kings. I mean, everything in Babylon was different. You know, if you're going to live for God, you're going to live this life different. Because we're, this is not our home. He said here, he said they hung their hearts because they was in a strange land. This world has a way of sucking it out of you. This world has a, a, a way of just killing you on your, on your, uh, your joy. Where is the joy? We've hung it up. When I think about Zion, when I remember, notice what he said back in verse number 1. He said they remember Zion. What is Zion? Now that's the temple. That's where the temple of God was in the Mount of Zion. And they would go to that place for refuge. They would go to that place for strength. I think so much about that with about church. As you heard me say many times, church attendance does not a fix all. But there's something about church that ought to be a refuge. There ought to be something about church where you can come in and, and sit around God's house with God's people and hear God's Word. This ought to be a place of difference. This ought to be a place of refreshment. This ought to be a place when you walk in these doors and sit down and say, Praise God, I'm at church. I mean, this is Zion for the people of God. This is our refuge. Look, the world's not going to love you. The world's not going to pamper you. The world's not going to cater to you. But bless God, we ought to have a place to come in and sit down in a place of Zion and sing the songs of God and worship God of heaven. And then one of these days we'll say, we, we just should have done that more. We should have done that more. It, it, it hurts a man's heart. It hurts a pastor's heart when, when you see people slipping out of church. The devil does this. I know he does it. It, it. You miss a Sunday, not too bad. You miss another Sunday, it gets a little easier. Miss a couple Sundays, it gets a lot easier. Before you know it, it's been a month since you've been in church. They got to a place in Babylon, and they looked around and said, Oh, oh, I would to God we could get back to Zion where God's blessing was. I wish we could go back. You know, that's what happens to this world. When you hang your harp up, your joy slips away. They were broken over their captivity, and they should have been. Nothing is going to correct America like some trouble. God's going to bring America to her knees. And He's going to do it through heartache and difficulty and trouble. Prosperity, we don't need God. But you let God bring a heartache and difficulty, people hit their knees. It's exactly what we find here. They remember Zion. They knew how good it was in the church house. They knew how good it was in God's blessing. They knew how good it was. And that's why they wept. Oh, I still think about that prodigal son. I mentioned him last week, but he's worth mentioning again. That prodigal son said, Oh, I got to get back to my father's house. I got to get back to where the blessing is. I got to get back to where the, 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 they flow with milk and honey. I've got to get back. I remember where it was good at my father's house. If you'll notice here, they wept. I find something interesting there. They wept openly. You notice that? You know what I find in verse number 1? I find they lost their joy and they're urgent about it. People have any problems weeping openly and in public when it's urgent. It's easy to conceal. It's easy to hide. It's easy to stand behind something and be hidden. But when it's true tragedy and true heartache, you don't care who's watching. I'm going to get right with God. Here, the Bible says, they wept when they remembered. Go with me. I'll come right back. Go with me to Hebrews 11 real quick. Real quick, and I'll come right back. Hebrews 11. I want you to see something on the line of hanging your harp and being in a strange land. I'm going to remind you of something. Hebrews 11, verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a, seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country, notice this now, 
If you're mindful of that country, he's reminding us, if you're mindful, from whence they came out, they might have opportunity to have returned. But now, they desire a better country. That is, a heavenly wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. Look, the day you get ashamed of God is the day you lose your joy. He says, they're not ashamed to be called by God. He said, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he received the promise of offered up his only begotten son. Verse 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from hence he also received a figure. You know what he's saying? You get your roots in this area. You get your uh, satisfaction in this world. You're going to be highly upset. They lost it. They hung their harp up because they were so destroyed because they was in a strange land. Notice the next thing I want to show you. Notice the, their song got stolen. Notice verse number three. I always know when my heart's been hung up in the willows is when I quit singing. You say, when the preacher, you can't sing. And I'd say, amen. But I can sing in my heart toward the Lord. You know when I always know I've gotten back on God is when I don't want to sing. And I'm not saying you've got to be a professional singer. I'm not saying you've got to be some sort of concert so, soulist. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying, when there's not a song in your heart, you know you've lost the joy of the Lord. Honestly. You walk around and the world's drug you down. The, you're living in a society that's on every turn. It's stealing your joy. And before you know it, you've stopped singing. The Bible says, notice what he said, verse number 3 and 4. He said, how can we sing a song? They required, notice what? They required of them, they're captive, remember now, they're slaves, if you will. They have brought them into Babylon and they told them, sing. It wasn't out of devotion, it was out of duty. And that's a, that'll steal your joy when you think you've got to do something out of duty instead of out of devotion. When it changes from devotion to duty, then you've lost your joy. He said, sing a song. The Babylonians said, sing a song. And they said, how can we sing a song? We're in a strange land. How can we sing God's song? Even the world said, sing us something about God. They knew they needed God. This world can say what they want to, but when tragedy strikes, they know they need God. They can say what they want to. They can cover it up. They can say we don't need it. But in their heart, they know we need God in this. And the whole time they're kicking Him out, the whole time they're expelling Him, the whole time they're wanting Him out, but the whole time they need Him. The song gets stolen. That's when you know you have hung your harp up. When's the last time, beloved, that you've sang, I was blessed this morning. I didn't prompt him. I was walking through the house, and I heard one of my children singing the songs of Zion. And I was walking through the hallway, had this on my mind. I said, thank God he's got a song. Thank God he's got a song. You know what that does? That heart, that song identifies your heart. When you can't sing... You have hung your harp in the willows. You say, why is that so important? Why is it so important that I've lost my song? Well, what's that indicating? That's indicating that you're getting distant from God. Notice what it says, they're in a strange land. They can't sing the songs of Zion. Why? Because they're away from God. You won't find anybody that's in the will of God that cannot sing. You find somebody that cannot sing, more than likely they're out of the will of God. Sing us a song, man. Sing us a song. I ain't singing a song. How can I sing when I'm in bondage? Verse 4, how shall we sing? How can I sing? Go with me to Colossians. I'll come right back. Go right down Colossians somewhere. I think I got it on the screen for you, but Colossians chapter 3, I'll read it to you. You can look at it there if you don't want to turn over there. Colossians chapter 3. Notice what he says. In Colossians 3, verse number 16. We'll go back with you. Go up verse 15. Now, notice his expressions. Now, this is critical. When you think about where's your song at? Let the peace of God, notice that, rule in your hearts to that which also are called in the body, and you be thankful. Notice this, verse 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. So let the peace of God rule. Let the word of Christ dwell. And admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. 
You've lost your song when you've hung your willows. The world has stolen your song. The devil has ripped from you the song. When I think about David, go back to King David, when I think about that sweet psalmist, that young boy sitting out there uh, in, the, in the trees and in the willows and the grass singing the praises of God. Why is it as he gets older as an older man and he's committed some sin and he, I can't help but think in his palace there's harps. I can't help but think that in his palace there's harps all over the place. And he was a young man singing for the Lord and praising the Lord and, and playing his harp and worshiping God and had the joy of the Lord. And man, he was on, he was on a mountaintop. But when he had committed sin with Bathsheba and he was walking through, they say somebody a year he hid that sin. And he's walking through, I can't help but think in my mind, he's walking through the palace and he sees his heart laying there. He knows he's in sin. He knows he's away from God. He has no song. He has no joy. He has no rejoicing. He's walking through the palace one day. I can't help but think the Holy Ghost said, Look at there, Jay, David, there's your heart. Pick it up. Pick it up and play it. And his heart was cold and indifferent. And he walked by that harp and wishing he could play it, wishing he had the joy of the Lord, wishing he had the rejoicing in his heart once again. I'm going to tell you something. That's a miserable place for a Christian to walk by your harp, knowing you used to could play it, knowing you wanted to play it, but you have got distant from God and said, Oh, I wish I could play that harp. I've hung it up. I've quit. I've got the joy of the Lord. I don't have it anymore. He said they require a song I can't sing. Colossians says... Get the Word of Christ in your heart. You'll have the peace of God and grace to be in your hearts. He said, how can I do that, preacher? Get in this book. If you've heard me say one thing thousands and thousands of times, and it should be repeated thousands and thousands of more, is get in this book. You neglect this book, and you're neglecting your Christian life. You cannot have, listen to me, you cannot have the joy of the Lord and neglect this book. Amen. It is an impossibility. You're not going to get up and spend your life and not read God's Word and have the joy of the Lord. God's not going to play tricks with you. He says, they required a song, but I can't sing because I'm distant from God. May ask God to give you joy back, give you a song back. I read in Nehemiah where the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know why we have a bunch of weak Christians? Because they don't have any joy. You know why they don't have any joy? Because they've gotten cold and indifferent on God. They ain't spent time with Him. They ain't read His Word. They've not prayed. They've not done anything for God. You think He's going to give you your joy and peace? Absolutely not. And it shows. You can't hide that. You, you, you cannot hide the countenance when you've got the joy of the Lord. You know it, you see it, and you know in your heart when you've got it. And you know in your heart when you don't have it. You know when you're distant from God. I don't have to tell you that. A preacher don't have to tell you that. A Christian don't have to tell you that. Holy Ghost tell you that. Man, I wish I had my song back. Man, I wish I had the joy of the Lord again. Man, I wish I could get that heart back down and tune that and get the dust off that thing and start playing it for God. I've hung it up in the willows. Last thing I want to show you, it steals your song when you've hung your harp up. You're in a strange land, no doubt it'll suck, the, it'll suck your song out. The last one, and also it'll destroy your testimony. The day you hang your harp up is the day your testimony starts going down the tubes. You say, what are you talking about? Look at verse number 6. He says, if I do not remember thee, that's what he's saying. That, that's that dedication. That's that devotion. When I don't remember thee, when I don't spend time with thee, when I don't talk with thee, when I don't read your word, when I don't have the joy of the Lord, he said, notice this, he said, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. God speaks so much about the heart. If you were here last week, we preached on departing from God, and the, 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 the key evidence that you're departed from God is that you have a cold heart. Your heart's got cold and indifferent. God says so much about the heart. Go, go with me to Psalm 146, just one page over. If you start reading in Psalm 146, and you'll read all the way to 150, the very first word you read in those Psalms is this, Praise ye the Lord. 
Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. The book of Psalms is nothing but a praise book. Psalm 147. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. On and on. Verse 41, 48. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise ye in the nights. Praise ye the angels. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. What's He saying? Your heart identifies your harp. I can't praise the Lord. And when you stop praising Him, your testimony goes down. He says, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I prefer not Jerusalem. Oh, He's crying out to us. God's crying out says, get your heart back down. Get your harp out of the willows. Get them back down. Yes, you're in a strange land. Yes, you've been in captivity. But look, God will give you a song in the night season, the book of Psalms says. Even in heartache, even in difficulty, even in a backslidden condition, God will still give you a song. We may need to say, as David said in Psalm 51, 12, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Then... Will I teach transgressors thy ways? And sinners shall be converted. Why is it so important that I get my heart back down? Why is it so important that I get the joy of the Lord? Why is it so important? Because God said, if you hang your harp up, you're not going to help one else. You're not going to help anybody else. You're not going to help a fellow man that's discouraged if you're discouraged. You're not going to help the fellow brother or the fellow sister that's being going through some heartache or some difficulty or some trial of life when you're under the same boat. God said... Get the heart back down. Start praising me. Start worshiping me for what I am and what I've done for you. Be like Paul in Acts 20, 24. He said, I have finished my course with joy. I don't want to finish my course with bitterness. I don't want to finish my course with hatred. I don't want to finish my course with my willow hanging in the tree. I want to finish my course with joy. I want to meet God playing my harp. I want to meet God joyful. I want to meet God victoriously, Christian. Not some sort of backsliding on God. I don't want God meeting God and my, my heart being hanging in a willow somewhere. I want to be in my hand playing it. But I can't help but think, I can't help but think we find ourselves so many times we just hung it up. Cry out, restore unto me. God, give it back. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. God will give it back to you. As he said, we hang our harps upon the willows. Would you pray with me? We'll go to the Lord in prayer.